Birds, the radio show. We're outside the studio with Todd Hickey, filmmaker behind Takedowns and Falls, an amazing wrestling documentary and also part of Resilient Picks. And uh, we were just chatting with Todd about what he'd like to do for his next documentary that he has sort of in his mental pipeline here. And uh, he talked about how you want to maybe not be so emotionally invested in your quote subjects and maybe almost have people who are seen as villains. Right, yeah, absolutely. I, like we talked about on the show a little bit, I think that one of, one of the more difficult things was being so invested personally, becoming personally invested in the characters in the film. We really rooted for them, we really cared about them, and ultimately we were concerned about their portrayal, you know, that, that, that it was an honest portrayal, that didn't hurt anyone's feelings, that everyone felt like they were treated honestly and fairly, you know, and that, you know, was a considerable amount of anxiety, I guess, generated from, from that concern editing the film. And I've decided I'd like to go in the other direction with my next film and make it about people that I would, going into it, maybe it's dangerous, but consider villains as opposed to heroes. And, um, and, and I think there's a lot of them out there, and there's a lot of, you know, room for, for us to examine some things that are going wrong. I think Take Down Some Falls, we, our purpose was to examine some things that were right, like here's some people that are doing things in a way that works, that's healthy for them in some regard. And, um, and I want to examine the, the ga natural gas industry and um, media's influence on public policy, and it's really, big in Pennsylvania right now where Take Downs and Falls was also made. And, um, you know, I, I want to examine the media's influence on how the laws are being written and why they're, why people are voting the way they are, which seems to be in their own demise, you know, because uh, by all accounts fracking is pretty dangerous, it's pretty poisonous, it's poisoning groundwater, and the, the couple of films that have come out that expose that have been attacked by big lobbying firms that, that are hired by the natural gas industry and I think that you know there's media being made and now that media is being attacked by media and then and and now we would examine that and how that actually like plays out and and how people vote and end up voting and what people end up seeing and how they're convinced that this is good for them or bad for them as a community you know, and people as communities are voting like for it. So, so what is it that's convincing them that this thing that is poisoning them is actually good for them? You know, I mean that's not. You know what I mean? That it's it's quite a difficult paradigm that they're stuck in. People come to buy your mineral rights from you. They tell you it's okay, but then science proves that it's probably poisoning your groundwater. You know, what, what other than the money convinced you as a, as a homeowner, as a landowner, that this was something that is in your best interests? You know, and there's a ton of money behind, you know, the pro gas industry because it's all, there's a ton of money going to it and there's a ton of money invested in lobbying for it, but, you know, there's not too much, like, consumer protection out there concerning it. Not too many people that are able to afford to get all the information they need to make a better decision. So we would like to examine that information channel and, and, and how it affects how people make decisions about their own land, about their own rights, and ultimately their own health. Hmm. That's fascinating. The one thing I'm thinking, do you fear a backlash knowing that there is so much money behind the industry what if you put out something, as I imagine it being amazing and having great success and it being very truthful, do you, do you envision it and do you fear what type of backlash could happen? Um, I'm sure there would be some backlash if it was successful, but I don't fear it at all. I think this is information that has to be out there and, you know, what, what can they do to us, right? It's like, we're, we're filmmakers, like, ultimately, what could they really do, you know, like, um, but I think in, in some cases the backlash will drive its popularity, you know, and then sometimes that backfires absolutely for, for large lobbying firm, firms that, for example, the film um, Gasland by Josh Fox, I know Josh was attacked it personally, it seems, and his film was attacked it, as if it was providing misinformation when the 
campaign against it was the Im misinformation, but they have a farther reach, a louder voice, they can buy ads on television, you know, so they in some ways win those battles if we don't keep fighting back, if there's no one to just keep, like, no, come, like, no, you're not telling the truth. We're telling the truth. You're lying. But if you know, if the liars get to say it more, then ultimately they win. I think you know, and we see that over and over in America right now with all kinds of decisions that are being made by Americans that seem to be in their own disinterest. You know, in their not their own not best interests. You know. Going back to something you said about um, takedowns and falls. I mean, you were very emotionally invested in the people in the film. So in keeping with not wanting to hurt people's feelings, and especially in this industry where you can hurt someone's feelings and not even realize it, because we're all sensitive, we all have egos, um, how did you deal with that? How did you work around showing someone and, and not hurting their feelings with it, especially um, being so close to the subjects? I think it was just this like personal like, line inside of me but somewhere that felt like that's manipulation you know like this like you're manipulating that if you put those together that's that's n not honest you know that's a manipulation by juxtaposing two images you know what I mean and that like anytime we felt we were crossing the line then it then then we decided not to do it you know but if if, if it felt like it was the truth you know and that we weren't manipulating it then, then we went forward with it, and some of those truths are difficult, you know, for people to know about themselves or hear about themselves, or for kids to hear what other kids are saying about them, stuff like that. You know, like none of those kids ever asked to be in the film, and you know, I took the responsibility of not like, you know, destroying their character very seriously. You know, what I mean, we all have character flaws, and it's so easy to make someone a villain in a movie. You know, but is it? fair? Is it the right thing to do just for dramatic license, you know? So we took that very seriously and if we felt like we were crossing the line then we didn't do it. You know, some films demand that, even some documentaries demand that, but we didn't think that those kids deserved it and, and we didn't think like the film demanded it. It, had a, it has its own dramatic arc, the season provides that, the characters' illnesses provide that, you know, so to just sort of target someone to, to make a point, you know, in an easier fashion because that's all it comes down to is like do we make a point in a difficult fashion that's going to take more work and more shots and maybe not have the same punch or do we just cheat to the point, you know, and we decided not to not cheat the point, you know, and, and take the long way and that's why the film's two hours long maybe. <laughs>